Hey everybody, so I'm going to be talking about the BET nominations for Best Female Rapper of 2021 and how this correlates to the subject matter of the state of female rappers. So let's get into this video. So I've talked about in my last videos, especially the video for Black women and the erasure of Black women artists in the 1980s and how BET was really helpful for Black artists and especially Black women during that time period because MTV was, well, not really fond of the Black artist at that time. Pretty much racist. So BET was extremely helpful for Black artists to showcase their work and this was especially true for the 80s, 90s, and the 2000s. But something started to happen in the mid to late 2000s where BET was not really doing that showcasing anymore. And it seemed that BET was trying to go a different route. And if you've watched my video on why do black women have to sell R&B and hip hop, You'll notice that I mentioned that during the 2000s and especially like the late 2000s, we started to see a decrease of music videos being shown on BET. So we were getting a lot more like reality TV shows and not even the reality TV shows were really emphasized as much as we got later and later into the 2000s and especially as we approached the 2010s. And Black Femininity, a channel that I really love watching, does a great job going into why Black people have lost trust and basically overall faith in BET. And it's a very good video, so please watch that for more of a historical breakdown of BET and those changes that happened within the time frame that she basically emphasizes. I'm not going to act like other music TV stations are doing any better. We've seen VH1 grow into this factory of reality television with Love and Hip Hop, Basketball Wives, etc. And we've seen MTV make that same move. They show hours of ridiculousness and there have been many complaints about that, especially when they started showing more reality TV. But a lot of people put their faith in BET because BET offered something that those other channels did not offer, especially for black people. And it felt like BET was trying to be more like those other music channels by trying to partake in original TV shows and more reality television. And I understand that and I have no problem with that growth. But when they started to do that, they also started to neglect some of the things that made them what they were during their golden period. But one thing that BET did not lose was their award ceremony, the BET Awards. And this is actually very similar to what MTV currently does. MTV barely shows music videos, but they still have the VMAs. And to be honest, this is really, to me, where BET really missed the mark when it came to promoting artists that did not have the same power as some of the bigger mainstream artists, especially when it came to female rap. And what I'm about to say has nothing to do with any negative feelings that I have towards Nicki Minaj. I actually think she's super legendary. I think she has paved the way for many female rappers. In fact, I've done a video about Nicki Minaj and how influential she's been in the 2010s. Please watch that video. It's also about Nicki Minaj and Rihanna and also Beyonce and how they were able to be relevant throughout the 2010. But every year for the female rap category at the BET Awards, Nicki Minaj won from 2010 to 2016. And in 2017, Remy Ma won. In 2018, Cardi B won. And while they nominated smaller name female rappers, they didn't really promote them at the BET Awards. So there would be a year where they would nominate Azalea Banks and there would be a year where they'd nominate Angel Hayes, yet they never performed at the BET Awards, even though they had some influential years when they were nominated at those times. But they had no problem nominating Iggy Azalea and allowing her to perform at the BET Awards, which Iggy Azalea is not black, so there were a lot of think pieces and a lot of different videos about the appropriation that she was doing during the mid 2010s. So please do a quick Google search or a YouTube search if you are not familiar with 
what she has done during that time period. And while I do appreciate the fact that they had Lizzo perform in 2019, would they have allowed her to perform if she was not on a mainstream level? And to me, that's pretty concerning. And this brings us to the nominees regarding the female rappers for 2021. And the conversation on Twitter and on social media has really been about the fact that the nominees were relatively light-skinned, or at least we did not have any dark-skinned female rapper nominees. There were discussions on how Flo Millie was snubbed because she had a very big year with her album in the beginning of 2020. I'm not sure if the City Girls would be considered in this category because they are a rap duo and they were also nominated for the duo category. But Chica, who is a dark-skinned fat rapper, expressed her feelings on being snubbed. But a lot of this feedback is based on the fact that people are actually plugged into female rappers today where in the past 10 years they really weren't like i said earlier bet did not really promote some of the lesser name female rappers especially when it came to performance opportunities and people are just now noticing this because people are pretty much paying attention to female rap and there are a lot more female rappers that people are identifying with and listening to through streaming services. But honestly, current BET, and I'll say current from 2010 on, reminds me of somebody's out of touch uncle that is trying to understand all of the musical trends and throw something together so the kids start tuning in and think that the channel is trendy. But I think these nominees say something much bigger about the state of female rap. While there are way more choices to choose from when it comes to different female rappers, we're still focusing a lot on a very specific type of female rapper. And especially when we're talking about the look of a female rapper, a lot of the mainstream female rappers today, and I mean really, really mainstream, are light skinned and especially biracial. And some of you all know how my politics are when discussing people who identify as biracial, I do believe, and this is specific to people who are half black and half non-black, I do believe that they can identify as being black, but they are also biracial because they are granted specific privileges that people who have two black parents do not receive. And this is especially true for music and television and also movies. There are tons of privileges for bi biracial black women as opposed to black women with two black parents. And this is especially true when we are comparing biracial black women to dark skinned black women. Dark skinned black women are often shut out. And this is very upsetting because we're seeing this happen with female rap. And going forward, we also have to discuss the priority that's given to female rappers who embody a specific type of femininity and a specific type of sexuality. While I do not think there is anything wrong with the female rappers today expressing their sexuality, I love their music, I love their style, and they don't need to change anything about their sexual expression and the way that they embody femininity. I am not saying that at all, love them. But it seems like the music industry will only promote female rappers who embody this specific femininity and sexual expression. This leaves out female rappers who do not embody that type of femininity and that type of sexual expression. And that is problematic. And again, this is especially true for dark skinned women. I do feel that a rapper like Doja Cat has had a lot more versatility or has been allowed to have a lot more versatility with her sexual expression and her music, but she's also light-skinned biracial. And she's also not the only female rapper that expresses herself in that way with that sense of diversity. And I feel that now that female rap has become mainstream, we're now seeing this cookie cutter imagery of female rappers. So they're usually light-skinned, most of the time biracial, and they embody a very, very specific feminine expression. And again, nothing wrong with the feminine expression that they are exhibiting and performing, but 
again, very limiting if the music industry ignores women who perform other types of femininity and sexual expression. I've been aware of this problem for years. I've been into female rap and female rappers as a whole since the mid 2010s. I've done my homework. I've studied some of the underground artists or the artists that have not been signed. And I've really appreciated them, especially Doja Cat. She's one of my favorites that has really come up in the past few years. I'm super proud of her. But I do wish that some of the other female rappers that I have been so plugged into for years and years, and some of the new ones, such as Flo Millie, I wish they got the same level of credibility and the same praise on a mainstream level. It did seem like Flo Millie was receiving that credibility early on, and I'm not really sure what happened. I'm also very much side-eyeing BET as a whole. I am extremely disappointed in their growth, and the one thing that they can really utilize, they just don't, they fall flat. I personally think the BET Awards is okay, but they can do much better things and they could put black women rappers on a pedestal, especially the ones that have not made it to that mainstream level. They could promote people like Cupcake, Flo Millie, Quay Dash, Jungle P, I'm not going to say the word because I might get in trouble on YouTube. But again, they have those opportunities and they seem to miss them. I just hope we get more diversity when it comes to mainstream female rap rappers, or at least female rappers that are getting the credibility that they deserve, because there are so many great female rappers out there. And I think it's important for us to have a diversity of different female rappers at the forefront. Diversity of skin color, diversity of expression, diversity of gender expression, diversity of sexual identity. Well, that's all I have for you today. Please stay tuned for the part two of America's Next Top Model and how it's a product of the 2000s. I'm still working on that video, but I hope to have it out relatively soon. Take care, stay well. Please like, comment, subscribe, share how you feel about this topic. What do you think? Anyway, that's all, bye.